So the full list of materials I used on this fly is in the description section of this video. Start by placing a dry fly hook in your vise. Then start your thread about a hook eye length from the eye of the hook. Then make a thread base on your hook to about the hook point. And then end your thread about halfway between your thread base. Now select a single CDC feather. I'm tying a BWO pattern here, so I'm using a BWO olive color. When selecting the feather, make sure it's one that has a good tip, and also without any fiber breakage. This one looks good. With the feather bend facing towards you, and the tip facing your left hand, pinch the tip of the feather and draw back the rest of the fibers. Place the feather on top of the hook and tie it in with two loose wraps so the curve angles upward. Then grab both the tip and the base of the feather and pull it rearward until you create a body, with the body ending about half a length of the hook shank behind the bend of the hook. Now make a few more tight wraps to lock the feather into place, and trim off the excess feather. Now clean up the waist section with a few wraps, and leave your thread about an eye length back from where the body starts and use your nail to raise the feather a bit. Now select a CDC puff in white, chartreuse, or some color you can see. We're basically just creating a hot spot on the fly with it. I find it helps to wet the puff before tie-in. Now place the puff on top of your hook and tie it in with a couple tight wraps. Then snip off the waist and cut the end of the feather to length. Clean up the waist section with a few more wraps. Now select two similar sized CDC feathers, and align the tips with the curve of the feathers facing away from each other. Then hold the feather with your left hand and stroke the fibers forward with your right hand. Measure out about a hook shank length and tie it in right behind the eye of the hook with a few tight wraps. Then pull the tips up and make a thread dam in front of them to ensure that they angle upward. Now pull both the front and rear part of the CDC feathers up and make two parachute post wraps around them. Now take the spent CDC feather you used for the body of the fly and trim off the fibers close. We're gonna use these as dubbing. So make a thin dubbing noodle on your thread. You'll probably use all the fibers on one feather. Make a few wraps with your dubbing noodle in front of the wing. Then behind the feathers as well. I like making one wrap under the body as well to keep it lifted up. If you have too much dubbing, just pull a little off and end right behind the hook eye. So I didn't show cementing the thread before whip finish, but I would definitely advise doing that. After whip finishing your fly and trimming off the thread, you can separate the wings a bit. Then with straight scissors, make an angle cut downward to trim off the waist CDC feather. Now we're gonna carefully trim the tip of the body feather so that only two fibers remain. This is a bit tricky, but take your time and make sure you trim this accurately. This creates the split tail of a mayfly naturally. No need for fibbits or tailing feathers here. And there we have it, a unique and cool looking mayfly imitation. One that is actually much easier to tie than it looks. Also, it uses only CDC, so there is no need to buy a ton of material and it's gonna float high. I think the split tail and suggested body of this fly really looks nice. As always, a list of materials are in the description section of this video. However, to view it, you must click the show more and it'll expand to the description section and show the list. I've also provided links to some of the best prices on materials I have found. Hey, thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.